Myopia, short-sightedness, has increased a lot in the past decade. By 2050, it's estimated that more than half of the world's population will have myopia. It's particularly a problem for kids. In fact, according to the World Health Organization, myopia among children is on track to become an epidemic. With screens now part of our everyday life, our eyes are feeling the impact. And for kids, it's affecting their behaviour and their schooling. For more on this, we're joined now by optometrist Dr Oliver Wu in the studio. Thanks for coming in this morning. Good morning. Just tell us a bit more about what myopia exactly is. Myopia is a condition of the eyes. People, the eyeball, a bit more longer. So the focus is in front of the retina, so musically they can see things far away, so, but they can see closer comfortably. Mm -hmm. Do we know why it's increasing in children? Uh, nowadays a lot of kids spend a more time in the, like all the electronic devices, uh, spend more indoor than outdoor, uh, probably also the parents' expectations in the schooling as well, like uh, OC class, mm. <laughs> selective school, well, like we noticed that. What is it about, about that sort of behaviour that causes myopia? Is it the fact that you're constantly looking at something that's up close or is it the fact that the screens are bright? Probably the stress in the close-up and less outdoor activities because we know the sunlight, uh, is ultraviolet, the sunlight, we're good for the myopia. We slow down the progressions of the eyeball size and when the eyeball size is small, uh, stable, so people will become less short-sighted. Is it also partly linked to genetics and are some people more susceptible than others? Yeah, definitely, especially in the Asians uh, background people, like uh, you probably notice more Asians, uh, people are more short-sighted than the Caucasians. Uh, if a family of uh, the father is short-sighted, the kids increase the risk for bigger myopia double. So both parents uh, are high myopia probably you're talking about five to six times more, their kids would be a more mild peak. Mm. And if you, if you, do, if you are short-sighted, then is treating it and getting glasses or contact lenses and so on, is that simply good for you in terms of how you can see or does it have long-term health consequences in terms of helping your eyes down the track? So now, basically, uh, we look at glasses or contact lenses to help a person to see clearer, better. So we also help them to, uh, like the kids, perform better in the schooling, academic and also in sport. But we want to use some uh, better options nowadays available in glasses or some special contact lenses to slow down the myopia by slowing down the eyeball side growth. Yeah, what are some of those better options? How do they work? I mean, the options, isn't it? Uh, we've got some special glasses, like specifically for myopia control glasses, and some contact lenses, daytime and nighttime. So the more latest design, like some daily disposable soft lenses, are really great for young kids uh, because they're safe. Daily disposable lenses are really great and safe. And when you say nighttime, so, uh, nighttime contact lenses, do you mean that some people would wear contact lenses to bed? Yeah, the special lenses called orthokeratology. So basically, you wear the lens at nighttime and you remove the lenses in the daytime. So you basically can see perfectly clean during the day. Without any lenses or glasses? Yeah, no and glasses, no contact lenses. What are the contact lenses doing while you sleep that they're able to achieve that? They, what we call this uh, awful keratology, uh, like a corneal reshaping contact lenses, they reshape your cornea. So a lot of studies support that this type of lenses can slow down the myopia, both the corrections and also the, the, what we call axial link changes, like the eyesight changes. When you talk about screens having an impact here, what sort of changes need to be introduced for kids in particular? What's the limit? Because obviously screens are a part of, even in schools, yeah. kids are using screens. Yeah, so now, what's the limit? yeah, now a lot of schools from kindergarten are already using all the, uh, the tablets. So we recommend the kids uh, to have more time in between, like for example, 20 minutes. Uh, I always suggest 20 minutes, five minutes to a bit more longer time to have them the break. At a time, you mean? Yeah. Right. So I, like my two daughter, I mean, I don't mind for them to do one hour work, but they have to break them down into three segments, like 20 minutes, have a break, and 20 minutes, have a break. Mm. Go outside and get some sunlight in between, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Plus, I think the best thing is probably is uh, family time together outdoor, not just tell the kid, go out. <laughs> family time together, You've probably go the out best too. thing. Uh, yes, that's the best things for family time. Where does laser surgery fit into all of this? Laser surgery probably is when you become an adult, okay, uh, to help you to correct the visions, I mean, your corrections pretty much like permanently, and then you help you to see things better with any glasses or contact lenses at all. And that, but that is a cure for myopia specifically? It's not really a cure for myopia, it's probably correcting your corrections, yeah. 
But we want to do something what we call uh, early interventions mm -hmm. because we know the earlier we intervene the myopia progressions, uh, the higher chance that we can slow down the eyeball size growth. When we can slow down the eyeball size growth, we will minimize the risk a person, who myopic person will, uh, will face in the future. For example, like a cataract, glaucoma, uh, retinal detachment, or, or the macular disease due to high myopia. Mm -hmm. like some people like me, I'm minus 50. So if Joe or Josh, you're minus six, the chance for you to have a cataract or like a, like a glaucoma probably about 15, 20 times more than me. Mm. So yeah, we try to slow down the myopia as soon as possible and early as possible. Dr. Wu, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Great to talk to you.